Welcome to the Million Vegan Grandmothers podcast. And I have Jane Velez Mitchell with me today. I am so excited to have her here. She is the founder and the voice and the chemistry and the energy and the powerful force behind on chain TV. I think it's the only streaming television network that is vegan. Is that correct, Jane? All right. Jane, I want you to take it away. I want you to introduce yourself in whatever way you want to do that. And then we're going to slip into some really great conversations. Yeah. So thank you so much for having me, Tammy. My name is, as you mentioned, Jane Velez Mitchell. I was in mainstream media for many years. I worked in New York and Los Angeles, where I'm at now. I was on local television as a reporter and anchor. I was also on syndicated television, and I was also on national television, most recently at CNN Headline News, where I had my own show, Issues with Jane Velez Mitchell, which was a great name because I have a lot of issues. Um, <laughs> after I basically, th that show ended, I was exactly 59 and a half. And I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm ending on a good note. That was the peak of my career, having a national TV show. And um, I said, when I had that show, I was able to do an animal segment once a week. Basically, when I got hired, I said, would you mind if I did a little animal segment once a week? And they said, mm, well, we don't. they probably thought I was going to do pet adoptions or something. They said, oh, that seems like okay. Well, I did hardcore animal rights activism for six years on CNN Headline News. And uh, what I wanted to do was do that full time. And so once that show ended, I decided to start a nonprofit. And uh, basically, we were just using social media. So I remember the first time that I shot a story as part of the nonprofit, I was in Brooklyn doing uh, a protest against Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. It was the dead of winter, 200 people holding signs. I had a GoPro camera. This was actually before Facebook Live came around. This was like early 2015 or late 2014. That, that winter, my hand was shaking. And I even thought to myself, is this worth it? It's freezing. Who's going to see this? But I realized these 200 people are standing there protesting in bitter cold, Nobody's really looking at them. They're just running in to see the circus that at that time still had animals. That's what we were protesting. And I said, no, this is a niche I can fill because I can show everybody else. So that was a start. And of course, no thanks to me, thanks to PETA and other big organizations, Ringlings went out of business in its model of using animals and now supposedly is going to come back without animals. But it always seems impossible until it's done, as Nelson Mandela said. It seemed like a long shot when we were standing there in the cold, but it happened. And that's just one example of the many changes we can make if we burst through the vegan echo chamber and talk to the mainstream, because we are trapped in a vegan bubble. We spend a lot of time talking to each other. And my goal is to reach people who need this information. There's 8 billion people on the planet. I've been to too many documentary screenings where I have to look at graphic footage and I turn around, everybody's already vegan. We don't need to see it. We need people who are not vegan yet to see it. That's why I started Unchained TV. At first, we were doing it all on social media, Facebook. We had like 17 million views one year. When Facebook was like the Wild West, we did a daily vegan cooking show called Lunch Break Live. Never missed a day for at least five years. Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, 4th of July, we were always alive with our lunch break live show. But while at first we were getting, you know, literally millions of views, Facebook changed its algorithms and we started getting fewer and fewer views. It became more pay for play. And so what we had to do is pivot. So we pivoted to do a very successful award-winning cooking show, Celebrity Packed on Amazon Prime, New Day, New Chef. And it got awards, it won two taste awards, considered the Oscars of food, packed with celebrities, the star of Dynasty. Billie Eilish did a cameo and it was going gangbusters on Amazon Prime. And then after about, I'd say the better part of a year, one day I woke up and they started charging for it. It was free with Prime. The second they started charging, it went from like 400,000 views down to 1,000 views. Oh my gosh. So we tried to get him to change it. No, no dice. So 
That's when I have a great producer I work with. He's worked with the BBC, et cetera. And he's, he's Irish. And he said, well, we can start your own streaming network if that's what you want to do. <laughs> Without thinking much about it, I said, yes, because we have to keep pivoting. That's when we started Unchained TV. And my feeling is Unchained TV is a portal to literally at least one third of the world's population. Okay. I want everybody watching. If you love animals, if you want to save the planet, do yourself a favor, do the animals a favor, do the planet a favor and download Unchained TV. It's right there on your phone. You literally put the word Unchained TV. See that little dot? That's the, that's the streaming network. One place where the streaming network is showing. And you have thousands and thousands and thousands of videos that are vegan cooking shows, famous documentaries like Earthlings and Dominion and Vegucated and Forks Over Knives. And we just added Let Us Be Heroes. And we're just, we did a V-Kind cooking competition. We're about to add a new vegan cooking competition. Um, there's so much incredible content. We need the support of the vegan community in order to reach the non-vegans. So what I would say to you is, at the very least, don't say I'll do it later because later never shows up. Do it now. Go to your, it doesn't matter whether you have an iPhone or an Android phone, go to your app store and literally just write in one word, Unchained TV, Unchained TV, and it comes up and it's free. I do not take a salary. This is a nonprofit. Nobody gets paid for doing their videos. I might reimburse for vegetables when people are strapped and they're doing a cooking show, but we're not paying people, you know, certainly big money like the, the other networks are doing. Think about it. Most networks have spent billions and billions of dollars creating their streaming networks. We did ours for tens of thousands of dollars using the generosity and the creativity of the vegan community. Now, I want to take a second to show you how you can get it on your phone. You can also get it online. But I urge people, please sign up so you can get the notifications. And you can also get it if you have a Samsung TV. It's on all Samsung TVs now. If you have an Amazon Fire Stick, you can go in there, boom, Unchained TV, an Apple TV device, or a Roku device. So there's many ways to see this. Um, I want to give you a little tour so that you can see what we're doing. Um, okay, yeah, this is, I do a weekly video podcast. We just did the vegan dog food study, very, very important study. Uh, you know, dogs have left to their own devices. American dogs would be something like the fifth largest meat eating country in the world. My dogs are vegan. These are my two babies. Um, it, this study shows that, yes, you can be you can have healthy vegan dogs. This young lady, Paige Marinelli, she's a photographer. She's doing a tour across Latin America. She's showing me how the incredible juices they have in Rio. She just submitted her next story, which I have to watch. Uh, this was our Unchained TV fundraiser. I'd like to say, I might probably say this for last, but we are looking for 300 monthly donors. We got 100 because as I said, we're mostly volunteer. These are some of the volunteers here. Not every single person there is a volunteer, but that was the party. And I could just show you, it was a really fun party. Um, all right well you get extensive our team we're a fun bunch we have a great time i'd love you to join the unchained tv team those are some key volunteers right there 
Every single person you're looking at right there is a volunteer. And um, don't they look happy? Heck yes, they're having a good time. We're a, we, you know, it's not a sacrifice, it's an adventure. If you join the Unchained TV team, um, you are going to be part of really something extremely fun. Now, I don't know if the grandmothers approve of this, but there was a lingerie protest in Hollywood um, last week. And of course, Unchained TV covered it. So what I'm going to do is show you a little bit of that because it was a lot of fun with a very serious message. We are here in the heart of Hollywood. And we're here. It's called the Lingerie Protest Movement. And it has spread all over the globe. This didn't come out of nowhere. All this started when an Australian supermodel named Stefania Ferrario, who happens to be vegan, had a thought. She said, you know, I'm using my sex appeal to promote all these products. Why don't I use my sex appeal to promote something that's close to my heart, veganism? So she stripped down and took off into the streets. And the rest is history. So <laughs> that's a fun show that we did. I edited that one. We have other people. We do need more editors. I'm up till four in the morning editing. We have um, like, you know, here, this we promoted World Vegan Tours. This is another one, World Vegan Tours. Uh, showing people how they can go on vacation Without harming animals. Power plants. I am Shailen. And I'm Kylie. And this is Chef Babette of Stuff I Eat. And we have uh, Karen Lacava here as well, uh, who uh, just recently went on a vegan safari. So uh, vegan safari. So I didn't even know this existed. Oh my gosh, it was unbelievable. I first learned about it on Instagram, ironically. No. Oh. Yes, on Instagram. And I went on first. I did Rwanda, and it was so amazing that I had to go to Botswana when I had a chance. Mm -hmm. And I'll definitely be going to uh, Kilimanjaro probably next. But oh, right now, wow. this this was so magical. The it just, we saw five day old elephants running after their moms. The footage so, is so amazing. Who, who, who shot this? I shot this, I no. shot all the footage. Yeah, so that was right here. We did this the other day in our living room. Um, I just edited that. And, uh, you know, I, I gotta tell you, we are working around the clock. Okay, we're promoting vegan restaurants. Uh, for example, hi, I'm Michelle Celestina for OMGLA. I am here in Redondo Beach, California at Chef Tara Pizzone's restaurant, Pura Vida. It's Italian vegan cuisine. And let me just tell you, look at this piece. Take a look before I dive in. I am so excited to be here. We're at Pura Vida in Redondo Beach, one of my favorite, favorite restaurants, and it's vegan and it's Southern Italian. Let me just tell you, waiting forever to do this interview with you. I love it. Thank you for being here. Yes. <laughs> okay, your story is incredible. But first, tell me about all the Pura Vida restaurants. Uh, okay, well, we opened uh, the original Pura Vida in West Hollywood on uh, Santa Monica Boulevard in 2018. And then two years later, right in the beginning of COVID, we opened the pizzeria right next door because that's good timing. <laughs> and uh, But we lived through it. And then about a year later, we opened the location down here in Redondo Beach, which is right across the street from the beach. So it's pretty spectacular in the summertime. Um, yeah, I could not be more grateful. <laughs> well, uh, she goes into a really fascinating conversation about how she was uh, grew up in an Italian house, 
just meat and pasta, et cetera. And she went vegan for the animals at a very young age and started replicating all the different dishes uh, that they did at her home, uh, veganizing them and winning over her whole family and then embarking on this. It's a really interesting story. I just want to tell you one more serious one so that you get a sense. And we could be here all day. Remember, there's thousands of these videos. Um, and you know them, you know, you know the main ones. Like I don't need to show you Earthlings or Dominion or Forks Over Knives or all those classic documentaries. These are more things that we're generating ourselves. Lawrence Mitchell here. You are watching History in the Making. We are live at Dolores Park in San Francisco for the 2023 Direct Action Everywhere Animal Liberation March and Rally. <laughs> We're all very excited because it is truly history in the making. This is the first time that you will see various camera angles of people gathering for this major, major rally and march. If you will, I have found purpose in an industry locked in on high rises of bodies. I ask you all to look at the sky. I don't know what this speech. I don't know what it may look like. But as I make this speech, and as I'm speaking, now that you grow in an understanding before me, I've lost their lives. And those millions most have not once seen the sky. Yeah, we are here with this woman who was acquitted. She took a chicken along with Alexandra Paul, who is the famous. Baywatch actress, they did an open rescue, meaning they didn't hide their faces. They went in and they took a, two chickens off of a slaughter truck and they were tried and they were acquitted. What is the significance of that, Alicia? It's very significant. It's showing us that um, public opinion is changing and that when we do these open rescues, when we bring the stories of the animals to into these courtrooms and we get a lot of press about it and um, we tell their stories in open court and the cruelty that's happening, um, it shows that we're, what we're doing is right. What we had planned to do was right by um, exposing this cruelty and um, getting our peers to acquit us, not only in Merced, but in Utah is showing us that, you know, open rescue is a great tactic. We are changing um, the minds and hearts of lots of people. But you risk actually going to prison. You know the risks. So I was prepared for that. And um, I was just so happy with the press that we got even before trial started that I felt like we had already won. But So there's an example. In order to get mainstream media news coverage, you actually have to risk going to prison. It shouldn't be that way. And that's why we started Unchained TV. I have covered, you know, that protest I just showed you? of um, all the um, people at the Direct Action Everywhere San Francisco March, there was zero mainstream media news coverage. Oh. No, you have to get, you have to either take off all your clothes or you have to get arrested. And that's not fair. And that's why we want to do an end run around the mainstream media news blackout. But we need your help. Everybody watching, if you care about animals, take all that time that you spend talking to your neighbor for 45 minutes who's never going to listen to you or that cousin who kept keep saying, you know, mm, bacon, forget about it. We need to reach millions and billions of people, but we can't do it alone. It's a team effort. We have a lot of volunteers, as you saw with our party. And we have, we are seeking monthly donors. We have a match. Anybody who gives $5 or $10 a month or more, we, it gets matched. So right now we're at a hundred monthly donors, which we achieve by doing that party. And we want to get to 300 monthly donors, because let me say this. It's the last thing I'll say. We have the content coming in for free, or we create it. We self-generate it for very little amount of money. Uh, we figured out a way to sustainably actually run this streaming network, which is costing other people, like 
the Netflixes, the Amazon Primes, the NBCs and the whatever of the world, billions, literally billions of dollars. We're doing it on a tiny shoestring. But the one thing we do need also to raise money for is marketing. If we want to tell everybody we're out there, we have to do marketing. We've got to do marketing for Samsung users. We've got to do marketing for Amazon Fire Stick users, for Apple TV users, and for Roku users. So we can create all the content we want that could be life-changing because I was told at the party, somebody came and said, Unchained TV changed my life. I was a vegetarian. Then I started watching your videos and I went vegan. And Unchained TV has actually changed my life. I was uploading a whole bunch of composting videos and I realized I'm a hypocrite. I don't compost and I'm uploading composting videos. I started composting. I got a green bin for a condo association. I got a little metal thing for all my composting that's in my fridge and I changed my lifestyle because here's the thing this is long form content as much as I love social media and we are all over social media we have an unchained underscore tv instagram we have almost uh well more than three quarters of many people on facebook yada 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 you don't necessarily change with a 30 second or a 130 um reel Sometimes it takes more than that. You've got to watch a, a lot of content. And after, after maybe 45 minutes or an hour or three or, four vid, three or four videos, it starts seeping in. So that's why what we're doing is so important. Now, people say, well, there's YouTube. What's the difference? Well, I don't know about you, but when I'm on YouTube, I'm looking for something. Most of the time, I'm looking for an instructional video so I can work something that I've just purchased. But even when I'm looking for vegan content, I'm looking for it. We're trying to reach people who are not looking for vegan content, who actually usually look the other way. And that's one of the reasons why we're trying to urge all the people who are giving us content, stop saying vegan, 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 because we're trying, to, we have to reach people where they're at. You know where people are at? They're overweight. They have low energy. They're feeling depressed and down. They feel like their lives have no meaning. They feel surfacy. They feel plastic. R meet them there and then take them to a solution. They're worried about climate change. Okay, then meet them there and take them solution. So it's been actually a challenge because we can't, you know, when people are giving us video, we can't really argue with them and say, no, no, no. So we take all the videos, but we're really trying to encourage everybody, including ourselves. We have to say this to ourselves to stop with the vegan word. The word vegan doesn't save animals. Saving animals saves animals. I'm not against the word vegan. I'm all for vegan. But what I'm saying is sometimes when you construct videos, um, for example, somebody very smart who is vegan said, why don't you do a cha channel that says feel good stories, feel good videos. I said, that's brilliant. So we're going to add, I just had that meeting two days ago. We're going to add a whole chat, a whole line, a swim lane that says feel good videos because people, you know, once they watch a couple of feel good videos, maybe they start poking around. Then they, then they watch earthlings. Then they go vegan, right? Absolutely. And everyone needs to feel good in order to even care enough to do that. So I could see you also having a, a healing, like a heal, just simply heal you know, and the physical being of healing, that's the acronym for one of my books, Sacred Sovereignty is the HEAL acronym stands for hydration, homeostasis, energy and electrons, anti-inflammatory alkalinity and love and light. So I'm not talking necessarily about vegan in there, but all of those on a whole food vegan diet, you know, we get incredibly hydrated, we get electron rich, our, our you know, our inflammatory levels go down. So maybe we need just a HEAL. What does it mean to heal? And in that, you know, we can take somebody through a day of different people that are living a very healing lifestyle. That would be really exciting. I think. How would you like your own show on Unchained TV? Awesome. The grandmothers that are rocking it after 60. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you could have one. Um, you know, we want, I don't own this. It's a nonprofit. We are a 501c through nonprofit. We are almost entirely volunteer. There's a couple of people you know, coding type situations that we pay, but we they're they're also vegan and they also work for next to nothing. Um, so what we are really trying to do is make this a community platform that everybody who has an idea, assuming the level of professionalism is of a certain quality, we can't just we can't just put zooms on. 
Um, we have done that when there's big conferences like the um, European Vegan Summit. There was a European that was, but we we did a whole thing with them about how to do the Zooms and how to get everybody, you know, looking like they are on a network TV show. Because, you know, if you look at the network news, most people are talking now from their homes, but they're not talking from their homes with the bed unmade behind them. They're talking, you know, a lot of them like to show off their fancy homes, to be honest with you. Uh, their Park Avenue apartments, you know, and, and it looks like a million bucks. We can do that too. You know, we can do that too. We can set it up so that it looks great. So um, yeah, that's what, that's what I would say is um, you should have a show the the, the grandmothers or just you I talking about that. healing. And not just me, that's what will make it so exciting is as the grandmothers join, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of us join together. I just did a beautiful interview with a woman named Kat, or around um, Kate uh, Kunkel, and she she's a vegan brain health coach, and she studied it extensively. And she's sixty five. She did this, of course. A lot of these things appear out of our own illnesses, or we watch people suffer. And it was her mother dying of dementia. Now, how much brain sovereignty is lost in our world? And we say when we start forgetting things. Oh, it's just natural, you know, I'm getting older, but that actually isn't true. We've been lied to. We've been lied to. I mean, you know, the nutrition was taken out of out of physicians training in the in the late 30s, early 40s, you know, when the pharmaceutical companies started taking over. So it's actually not true that we can have really amazing brain health. And and there's no guarantee, but there certainly is a much stronger guarantee. So when the grandmothers appear and teach, one might be talking about brain health and the amazing gut brain connection and, and tips and, you know, for, for doing that. Another one might be talking about hydration. I love talking about hydration because there's a difference between drinking water and it getting across that cell membrane Mm. Get right into the cells so there that would go. be amazing because heal. we just call it heal yes call it heal the show could be heal that's a great way to get people in without saying vegan heal you know right. heal and then you, you yeah. heal if you're vegan or non-vegan we have to get rid of the inflammation the toxins oh, right we have to get ourselves super hydrated and we have to get connected and what's the quickest way to get connected Go vegan because we're not dealing with all that anxiety and the horrible effects of animal agriculture. It's not just the physical, which is huge. I mean, it's very acidic. It's very mucus forming. It's very toxic, very, very toxic. So high in the food chain, but it's also very emotionally distressful. And a lot of people aren't expecting that when they go vegan for their own health, that they start to become more spiritual. They just know things, things come out of nowhere. And it was very interesting that you brought up the Ringling Brothers Circus as one of the things that you helped completely shut down. I thank you for that. You know, I I, it, I don't want to take credit for that. PETA worked for years on that. They deserve the credit. Yes. I was just saying that happened to be the first protest I covered as part of this. You for covering. Yes. I was five years old and my, my father brought me to one of their circuses and I was sitting in uh, and it was a big deal. We didn't have much money to go anywhere. It was a it was a big deal. So I was sitting in some really low rows and an elephant, a female elephant came up and looked me in the eye and I started to cry. And then I started to weep. And then I demanded that my father take me out of there. And mm -hmm. he says, what's the matter with you? You're such a strange child. And I said, that elephant is so sad. And I didn't go vegan at five. It wasn't a choice in my home, but I thank PETA and you for covering that because in that exchange, you know, Zach Bush just did a, a, a webinar I just listened to and he said, when you are first witness, there's a very good chance it won't be by a human because they may not be able to hold you as powerful. It will be an animal that first helps you awaken or a wow. child or a baby, but uh, or something in nature but it often is an animal for someone mm. and yes. that's change. Yes. And we often grieve more for our animals when they pass away than for humans. But what I wanted to say was if you, for example, you want your own show, we can talk about doing that with a group of people. Um, but we, we do need support. And one of the things that I'm trying to tell people is this is not mine. You can, you can also feel like this is yours 
because it belongs to the entire vegan community. It is the world's only vegan animal rights streaming network. It's available everywhere except China, okay? So we have people watching in the Ukraine and in uh, Latin America and all over the place. Um, so what what I would like to do, we, we got 100 monthly followers and you just go to unshamedtv.com and click donate on the right. Uh, and it will also give you the donate link. And if you become a monthly donor, uh, that's two cups of coffee a month. Let's say $10 a month. That's not going to kill anybody. Two, two cups of coffee. But you'll feel part of all that excitement. And then we're going to have special Zoom meetings where we answer your questions and we talk to you specifically about what our strategies are and what we're going to do. Because the clock is ticking. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If we live in a world that you can't walk outside without collapsing and I was driving today in my Prius, which I don't really drive very much. I work out of my house, <clears throat> but um, I was listening and I kept changing the channels from MSNBC to the BBC to everybody was talking about climate change. And not one word, it, actually there was one word on the BBC where the woman said, and diet. And the guy never followed up. He never followed up. Well, what do you mean by diet? It, it's just like they don't want to discuss it. This is why we need Unchained TV, because there is a mainstream media blackout. Like I showed you, that DXE protest, a thousand people, with this most incredibly colorful march that's really like street theater through the streets of San Francisco and they don't cover it, that's censorship. That's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with censorship because the mainstream media is funded by their advertisers and their advertisers are fast food and pharmaceuticals for the most part. So Lovely. of course they're not gonna talk about it. So that's why we need to do an end run around the mainstream media blackout. So my point is, I can't do this alone. We need a team. If we had 300 or 600 monthly donors, that would almost make us self-sustaining because I spend a lot of my time fundraising. Now, I don't enjoy doing that. Uh, I would rather just be editing a video, shooting a video. I get called constantly three or four times a day. Oh, this is happening. That's happening. Can you shoot this? Can you shoot this? I can't shoot everything. But then I have to also spend a lot of time trying to fundraise to support the nonprofit. We have uh, insurance that we have to have. Our board of directors needs insurance. I'm on the board of directors, you wanna have insurance. Then we need media insurance. And uh, we've considered, we've gone it, but you know, there's the issue of cyber insurance in today's world. All of the, those costs are going up. Then we have to actually pay for the cost of the streaming network, which is run by a company, Vimeo OTT. They do a great job. But the point is that there are some unavoidable costs. Well, we make it as cheap as possible. And I personally feel like I'm doing a hundred different jobs. Why was I able to do this? Because I've worked in newsrooms for 38 years. I know how to, to set up a newsroom because I've lived in them for most of my life. So I'm able to recreate that in this format where anybody with a computer can have a studio. Okay, so we have a studio. You can have a studio in your living room through your computer and I have a studio. And so we have that. We have the ability, when you saw the DXE thing, that was the first time where we use multiple cameras. So we have a um, portable Wi-Fi where it's like a portable router where now we can do multiple cameras instead of just one camera. So we're doing a lot of high-tech things. So it, it's very exciting. I feel like what I'm doing is I've got a key. I've got a key to reach the rest of the human population. And I keep fiddling with it. And I'm like, unlock already, unlock. Because while we have surpassed the million mark, while we are getting at least 60,000 minutes viewed every month, we could get 60 million minutes viewed every month, but we can't do it alone. We do need the help of the community. So I'd say everybody download the app. You can download it on your phone. You can also go to unchainedtv.com and just click watch or go to watch.unchainedtv.com forward slash browse. Hopefully you'll put all these up in the uh, description and also consider becoming a monthly donor because it's fun. 
It's actually being part of a media community uh, where uh, you are really member of the news media. You are, because we are independent news media and um, what we're doing, nobody else on the planet is doing. Thank you, Jane. And the grandmothers will be more active in promoting that. We, we do a lot of letters that maybe we can um, also do some holding accountable of different networks and say, you know, as a vegan network, let's make sure that we're supporting live streaming on chain TV and um, welcoming the grandmothers in to share their peace. Because I think that there's a lot of people in many, many communities that hold the grandmothers in very high regards. In many communities, they have the last word. So if we, we are holding people accountable, we're holding corporations accountable, and we say, you know, the grandmothers in those communities say, we've had enough, we're not doing it this way anymore, then the world will change. I see it, I see it happening. So thank you for being a vegan grandmother of fur babies and part of our vegan community. Well, I can't say I'm a vegan grandmother of fur babies because thankfully none of my fur babies have had babies that <laughs> I know of under my watch. Okay, in fact, my dog, the reason I was driving today is my, my newest rescue is being spayed as we speak. So uh, I could say I'm a vegan grandmother ally. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you very much. And thank you, yes, for taking care of that piece where there's not more animals that. Oh, yes, that's a whole other conversation. Thank you, Jane Velez Mitchell, for being here. Thank you for On Chain TV and all the work that you do. I know you work so tirelessly. And I'd like to say one last thing. One of my big inspirations, Dr. Silas Rao, and I know you work closely with him. We have an entire documentary on Unchained TV called Countdown to Year Zero, which is basically a big profile of Dr. Rao. And, you know, he really inspired me. I first said, saw him at the Rowdy Girl Sanctuary in Texas. And there was a big field and this guy, I didn't know who he was. He got up and he started talking. And basically I was live. I was live. So people were listening, but there was nobody really watching where I was because there was all this great, there was like a fair and there was vegan food and everybody was just having a big old time and I'm live and this guy's talking. I'm like the only person like really focused on him. And he just blew me away. He said, we are going to have a vegan world. We know why we have to do it. We know when we have to do it by, we have to do it by 2026 because that's the year that we're gonna lose all wildlife vertebrates, if we keep on our trajectory, all we need to do is figure out how we're going to do it. And when he said that, it was like my brain exploded. I was like, oh my God, that's the first time I've ever heard somebody say, we are going to have a vegan world. And I remember reading up about the women who stopped the troubles in Northern Ireland. And they did a similar thing. There was a child shot in front of somebody's lawn on somebody's lawn and these, these women came out and they just said, we are going to stop the troubles. We are gonna stop this violence. And people laughed at them and said, oh yeah, yeah, you, you're gonna, you moms are gonna stop the violence. And they did, they ended up winning a Nobel Peace Prize for it. But what they said was until you articulate your goal, if you don't have the, the gumption to say it, how are we possibly gonna achieve it? And I remember thinking about that when I was listening to Dr. Rao and I was like, yes, he's articulating our goal. And so that was very inspirational. I ended up doing a whole documentary on him and I'm articulating my goal. This streaming network is going to be seen by millions and millions. Let's make it billions of people around the world. Together, we can make that happen. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for our being part of our vegan world 2026.